We're now continuing on page 30 still of your working file, continuing on, and we're going to finish off our business card project. How did you end up with your amplifier? Did you get close to it looking correct? I hope so. Look, even if you didn't, don't be too bothered. Uh, what you will have learnt through the process is invaluable. Well, you should have a copy of your business card where we were up to if you go back to page 28. So copy that to the clipboard, then paste back down. I'm just going to zoom into this section of the card and then we can finish off. Well, what I want to do first of all, now by the way, let me quickly remind you, I'm working in millimetres. You can alternate between millimetres and uh, inches, if that's what you want to do, throughout the project so you're staying within your world of measurement. So, for example, right now, I want to click and drag, create a rectangle, and I want it to be 30, write that down, 30 millimetres wide by 4.5 millimetres high and I'll fill that with that purple color we've been using. I don't want a black outline, so right click on the no color well. Okay, now with everything deselected, if you want, you can go back to inches. Select the object and you can see that same value in inches if you feel that you need to do that. However, I think working in millimeters is just as easy right now. Okay, there's my object. I need to take it back behind my text so right click come down to order and we're going to go behind click on my text and that pops that behind which is great I'm going to pull down a guideline and just line it up with the top there as you can see of my spiral and that's what I want this to line up with so I pop that away let it lock back in and don't forget to have a snap to guidelines turned on for this okay well now I'm going to create a duplicate and plus on my keyboard and I want my duplicate to be 1.5 millimeters wide make sure the little lock is off because we only want to adjust the horizontal not the vertical as well so 1.5 millimeters hit enter now using the arrow key on my keyboard and nothing else I'm just going to allow that to step all the way across I know it's an unusual way of doing it but you'll see why in a minute okay now if I deselect that, I want you to notice on my property bar I've got a nudge distance of 0.1 of a millimeter. Now if you don't, please type in 0.1 of a millimeter and we're working in millimeters, don't forget. Well now that I've created a duplicate, it's perfectly horizontally aligned and it's 1.5 millimeters wide. I'm just going to use my arrow keys and go back until I can just see a sliver of white. See how I can just see a sliver of white there? Even if it was a bit more, it doesn't matter. That's my starting point now. So what I'm going to do is use my arrow keys. One, two, three, four, five, six steps. Now I'm going to create a duplicate. So uh, plus on my keyboard. And I'm going to reduce that to 1.4. So I've gone down by a 0.1 of a millimeter. Hit enter. Again, use my arrow keys. Come back until I can just see a sliver of white. I can just see my sliver of white there. Now I'm going to go seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's think about what we've done. We've created a duplicate of this one here. We've stepped at seven presses of my left arrow key, which means it's now further than the first one is from there. So we've got a larger white gap and I've reduced the width by 0.1. Now when I use Control D, it will reproduce that getting smaller and further apart. Can you see that? So the slivers are getting smaller, they're spaced further apart, which is exactly what we learnt. And that's the effect that I was looking for. Doesn't that look cool? Now, I want to make sure my text is horizontally uh, centred. So E on my keyboard, and that's looking pretty good. I'll select all of that, finger on shift and deselect the text. Now I'm going to create a duplicate and bring it down the bottom. Uh, so right click. In fact, you know what, we really should have a guideline to do this with, shouldn't we? So let's drag this guideline down here, line it up with there. We'll do that again. Finger on Shift, deselect the text. Now I'm going to left click and drag. Now I can move it anywhere. Finger on Control, of course, constrains to a vertical, perfectly vertical movement. When I get to the guideline, it snaps. Right click my mouse to create a duplicate and release. 
Now, finger on control and page down, and that sends it down in the uh, stacking order every time I hit page down, so control page down. Finally, I just need to horizontally center that, so E on my keyboard. And of course, it's all to the left a little bit, isn't it? So let's select that, finger on shift, and that one, sorry, that one, and up there. Let's right click, so make sure everything is right uh, aligned. And then I'm just going to use my arrow keys, and by I, roughly, I think, center that. So that my uh, web address looks like it's roughly in the center there. Or, of course, you could do this. Select, go E and C. Then select all of the other text, finger on shift. Selecting this one last makes it the object we're going to align to. And then hit R on my keyboard and everything aligns. Now that's a good bit of graphical um, design training right there. We don't have our top piece of text centered in the block, but we have the largest piece of uh, text centered. So my uh, web address being longer is perfectly centered in the box and then I've right aligned everything to that and it just by nature looks correct doesn't it I might even now move this up a little bit because I think it is looking a little congested now maybe move that down a little that looks pretty cool there we go we're done well once you've finished your business card project we're ready to move on to our next lesson and learn some new really cool stuff